So today we're going to be looking at how to set up an internal NTP server on our networks. Time, I feel like, can be a little bit of a trivial thing to worry about for people. However, uh, at a minimum, it's an annoyance because our times are incorrect on our workstation computers or our servers. Um, but on a larger scale and more problematic for an administrator is logs can be incorrect uh, from uh, device to device. Um, if we're trying to troubleshoot, you know, some kind of security problem, when times don't match up, that becomes an issue. With event logs or sys logs or anything of that nature, if, if time is incorrect, it can become a problem. So we want to make sure that on our networks that we have the most accurate time that we can possibly get. On an enterprise environment at times, we can see that the firewall and our, or our layer three or content filter may be blocking outbound NTP traffic. And we don't want to allow all that outbound NTP traffic. Part of the reason why is because we can there's an attack called an NTP amplification attack. So what can happen is we can see that all of these devices on our internal network here can turn around and make external requests for NTP information. In turn, it floods this external server. It's essentially a DDoS attack is what it is. So what we would like to do is to have only our internal NTP server make request and then our domain controller is able to make the request to our internal NTP server and then from there our endpoints would connect to our domain controller. For today's lab we're going to make it a little bit simpler than actually trying to do this in, essentially on an enterprise environment. So what we're going to be looking at is we're going to have one endpoint and we're going to create an NTP server. Then we're going to allow this endpoint here to sync to our NTP server. And then our NTP server that's internal will then turn around and sync externally. We're not going to be blocking anything on the firewall, so we'll not be modifying any rules. Again, the, the objective of this video is to solely create the internal NTP server and get it syncing out to an external NTP server. So here we are logged into our NTP server that we're going to be building. So the first one thing we want to do is install crony. So to do that, we do sudo apt install crony. And that is it. That is all we need to do to install the service. Now, there's a couple of commands that we can use to check our activity on the server and also configure it. So the first thing we'll look at though is the configuration. So to do that, we'll go into the etc folder and then crony. And then from in here, this is our, our directory. So we only have two actual files for the whole thing. It's a very small program. So we'll just use nano. So we'll do uh, sudo nano. So from in here, we can see here's our pool that we're gonna be uh, pulling from externally. There's no need to change this. If you would like to change it, you're more than welcome to. Um, and any other settings that you may want to add in the future. Now, we're going to come back in here in just a little bit and add some things because as of right now, this is only acting as an NTP client, not the actual server. So we're going to back out of there. And then we're going to take a look at our first command, which is going to be crony C activity. And this is going to show us right here, we have eight sources that are online. So where it looks like we're up and running. So if we want to check those sources, we can do chronic C sources dash V. And then this will list all of our sources out. Uh, important note here, you will notice up here, it has uh, the server, uh, what it is, the server that it's in, and then the local state. If you're not able to reach the NTP server, you will have an exclamation point here. So the next one we'll look at is uh, the Chrony C tracking. And this will just give us some information that we may want uh, to have from our NTP server, see how often it's updating, and some other information. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm not real sure what it does. The other thing that we'll, we'll want to look at and will be useful, can be useful in the future, is uh, crony C and then clients. And then this will actually tell us that which clients 
are using our server to connect. So right now, uh, make sure that you do run that as root. So make sure you're using your sudo command uh, and it will tell you which one is using. Uh, if once we have a actual device that's syncing to this, it will then list that IP address of that device in here so we can know that which servers or which clients are connecting to this server. So as far as setting it up, this is it. Um, right now, we're pretty much ready to go. I actually do have one more thing that we need to add. So to be able to allow this to sync external sources, so we so as we're showing in the, in the earlier slides, we want to be able to look at this and sync from our domain controller into uh, our internal NTP server. So to allow it to do that, Crony actually has a little bit of a, a, a uh, built-in firewall, if you will. So we'll just do nano crony config. And then we're going to go down all the way to the bottom and we're going to add a new line and just say allow 192.168.5.0-24. And so that's going to cover my whole subnet of computers that uh, we're working in in this lab. Um, if you want to specify just a one computer, you can obviously just do it that way where you specify one, but we're going to actually do it with a CIDR notation of 24. So we'll, uh, from here, exit, save it up. Oh. Got to do that as sudo. All right. So from there, we're ready to go. So now we're ready to accept clients onto this computer. One last thing, we do need to reboot the service. So we'll just do system control. All right, so now we're rebooted. So now we're on our Windows machine and we want to set up Windows to now sync to our NTP server that we've created internally. So to do that, we have a couple commands that we'll want to use. The first one that's very useful is a uh, W32TM. So W32TM is essentially the command in which we'll use to modify time. You can use this to do all kinds of things when it comes to the time on the local computer. Uh, if you need help, just type in the W32TM, hit enter, and it will show you everything that it can do. But for now, we're really only going to use two different commands. So the first one we're going to do is W32TM forward slash query forward slash status. Okay, so this is one thing I would like to show. If you ever see this message, what it is is your computer has a time service that is that is on the local computer. If you need to turn it on, you go into services and time and hit start, and that will turn that time service on. So now that we have that time service on, we should be able to go in our runner command. Okay. We see that it's running. It's syncing from the local CMOS clock. So now we want to change that to our server that we've set up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to forward through uh, the command. It's W32TM forward slash config forward slash manual peer list. And then right here, we're going to put in right here. We're going to put in our new server, whatever we'd like that to be. In this case, it's 192.168.5.75 sync from manual flags or sync from flags colon manual and then update and then the update will actually force the change so we hit enter on that and then when we go back to our query status we will see that now our source is the ntp server that we have created we're going to go back to our ntp server and as i was saying before we can check to see if we're we've been able to sync from that server and if anything is connecting to that server so we'll do the we'll do the commands sudo crony c clients put in our password and we can see now we have a client that's syncing to the server so clearly now we have excellent communication between our client computer and our server Hope this video has been helpful for you. If so, make sure you hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, add them in the comment section below. I love talking with people that love technology as much as I do. Also, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Have a great day.